On the 20th of July 1866, the steamer Governor Higginson of the Calcutta and Burnage Steam Navigation Company had met this moving mass five miles off the east coast of Australia. Captain Baker thought at first that he was in the presence of an unknown sandbank. He even prepared to determine its exact position when two columns of water, projected by the mysterious object, shut with a hissing noise, a hundred and fifty feet up into the air. Now, unless the sandbank had been submitted to the intermittent eruption of a geyser, the governor Higginson had to do neither more nor less than with an aquatic mammal unknown to them, which threw up from its blowholes columns of water mixed with air and paper. Similar facts were observed on the 23rd of July in the same year, in the Pacific Ocean, by the Columbus one of the West India and Pacific Steam Navigation Company. But this extraordinary creature could transport itself from one place to another with surprising velocity as in an interval of three days. The governor Higginson and the Columbus had observed it at two different points of the chart, separated by a distance of more than 700 nautical leagues. Fifteen days later, 2,000 miles farther off, the Helvetia of the Company Nationale and the Shannon of the Royal Mail Steamship Company, sailing to windward in that portion of the Atlantic line between the United States and Europe, respectively signal the monster to each other in 42 degrees 15 minutes north latitude and 60 degrees 35 minutes west longitude. In these simultaneous observations, they thought themselves justified in estimating the minimum length of the mammal at more than 350 feet, and the Shannon and Helvetia were smaller dimensions than it, though they measured 300 feet overall. Now the largest whales, those which frequent those parts of the sea round the Aleutian, Glamac, and Ang Anglish Islands have never exceeded the length of 60 yards if they attain that. In every place of a great resort of a monster was the fashion. They sang of it in the cafes, ridiculed it in the papers, and represented it on the stage. All kinds of stories were circulated regarding it. There appeared in the papers caricatures of every gigantic and imaginary creature, from a white whale, a terrible Moby Dick of subarctic regions, to the immense kraken whose tentacles could entangle a ship of a five hundred tons and hurry it into the abyss of the ocean. The legends of ancient times were even revived. Then burst forth the unending argument between believers and the unbelievers in the societies of the wise and the scientific journals. The question of the monster inflamed all minds. Editors of scientific journals, quarreling with believers in the supernatural, spilled seeds of ink during this memorable campaign, some even drawing blood. For from the sea serpent, they came to direct the personalities. During the first month of the year 1867, the question seemed buried, never to revive. When new facts were brought before the public, it was then no longer a scientific problem to be solved, but the real danger seriously to be avoided. The question took quite another shape. The monster became a small island, a rock, a reef, but the reef of indefinite and shifting proportions. On the 5th of March, 1867, 